Hey guys, it is Friday night here in Manila, and as promised, we are doing our lowrider and donk video, which you can kind of see all of them laid out in front of you right now. And we'll kind of go over the evolution of the lowrider from the 70s up until today, how some of the trends had changed and other things like that. I'll kind of give you guys a briefing on that and then also show you some details on the different brands. And we have brands uh, such as Revell, Hot Wheels, Greenlight, Maisto, Jada, Motormax, and Muscle Machines. So quite a few different ones to take a look at. So let's get right into it. The first three you see here in front of you uh, in position, I guess I would say, like the two Impalas are hopping and then the Monte Carlo is in three wheel motion. So we'll start with this Monte Carlo. This Monte Carlo comes to us from Hot Wheels 100%. This came from the Voodoo set. It came with a some really weird looking custom car and a hearse. So I think there was maybe four, but I'm pretty sure that set only had three. But anyways, that's where this car came from. And they are really nicely done cars. The full metal, uh, which metal chassis and the um, suspension on these are very unique. It's not like um, the Revels. These are kind of like on a pivot ball. Um, that way, like when it's down in a lower position, it's easy to kind of pivot from side to side so you can position it like in the three wheel motion as we had seen. And it has really cool details with the exhaust and the oil pan bottom of the engine. The bad thing though is with that being said, those details move along with the uh, posable suspension. So the motor kind of drops down with the posable suspension, so does the exhaust. And then the cross member and stuff comes down and it looks really bulky. That's uh, the downside. But the upside is that it's very durable compared to the Revels. The Revels are more realistic, but a little more fragile. So this is a really cool Monte Carlo. 70, I believe, 70 to 72 to me pretty much is the same car, 70. So yeah, with only slight changes from 70 to 72. So first gen Monte, Monte Carlo right here. So um, I like having it in the three wheel, but like because of the pivot balls, you don't have to really worry so much. You can just push down on it and it slams the car down on the ground. So it's like very, very durable. Uh, whereas the Impalas, this is from Ravel. All of the, these, well, both of these Impalas, and actually there's a third one down here in front of us, um, come to us from Ravel. So this is their 63 Chevy, which is beautifully done with the details. The paint job is gorgeous. And they base these on actual cars that were featured in Lowrider magazine. So these cars have special names and such. So like, um, I think it was Gypsy Rose is one of the most popular lowriders ever built a 64 Impala. And they do make one of it, I believe. Um, and it goes back way back in the day, like to the late 60s, early 70s is when that car was first built, Gypsy Rose. So it's got a really strong heritage behind it in the lowrider culture. But this guy here, on the other hand, I don't know what they call this one. But this casting is beautifully done by Ravel. And the details, like the paint, the murals and such are really cool. The interior is also done in like a pink, but that would have been how the Lowrider's interiors looked. Um, so anyways, the gold Dayton wires with the white wall tires is beautiful. Um, now, their suspension, as you can see, it is just a U shaped or T shaped, I guess I would call it more like a U because it has the two arms and then your cross member with the axle. But when it comes down, it doesn't have this big bulky thing sticking down. So it looks more realistic. Little harder to pose um, than the 
Hot Wheels, but it is possible to put these on a sideways or like side to side action or three wheel motion, but it's hard, harder and you have to be very careful because as I said, these cars are very delicate. This car, I can't get it to set in three wheels, so I don't try to force it. But the 59 Chevy and the 61 Chevy, it's possible to do it with those two. And I'll show you in a moment. But Ravel focused more on an opening deck lid on these castings because they put the whole setup for the hydraulics back there, which is really sweet. Uh, the six batteries, the four pumps, so very nicely done. So that's what they focused on instead of a detailed engine in this series, which I think is really cool. Um, and then what I use to keep these cars like in that hopping position are the Johnny Lightning Willy stands that came on the old like Showstopper series and drag racing series, which they work really cool for like setting these cars up for hopping. You just kind of slide it in in the same manner like in the back axle and then set him down and it's kind of the same setup. So, as I said, um, we have the 61 here. This is also from Ravel. Very nicely done car. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on each casting because it will take forever. So, I'm trying to keep this at like 30 minutes or less. But this is a nicely done 61. Uh, as I was saying, like when we unboxed the Fast and Furious Hot Wheels one, that is probably one of the nicest 60 ones I've ever seen. This is nice, don't get me wrong, but I think Hot Wheels actually beat Ravel, and that's hard to say, but the Hot Wheels casting from Fast and Furious is pretty sweet. And you see the vanity plate from California too low, so pretty cool. And let me see if I can get this thing positioned right, but it's... As you can see, like how I got the one side shoved up and one side dropped down. It's possible to finagle these T's or U's how you want them to, but you have to be very careful. That's the thing. You can't really like force it, but sometimes it'll snap in the way you want it. So as you can see, I've got the back one uh position the way i want it to now this isn't going to be a really high three wheel motion but it will be slight as you could see so you can make them where they are positioned in different manners for you but in most cases it's just going to be like front and back and that's it um so let's go ahead and take a look at the 59 and the 59 same thing the trunk opens, you got your pumps and battery set up, really nicely done. And then that's the car at a full ride height, and as you can see, it's not stable on the Ravels really with the three wheel motion, but you can set them like that for some pitch picks. And now these I don't like force down because sometimes it doesn't want to go like the front doesn't want to drop but the back did so it's best to like pick these up and push on the bar because they do break very easily and the reason i keep emphasizing on that i have a monte carlo that had a mishap um and as you can see, I got the back jacked up. This was actually a Ravel model kit. They used to do the model kit thing like Johnny Lightning and like M2 machines, which is pretty cool. But because of these brittle T-bars, I had pushed too hard on it and it broke. And there was no fixing it. I even got a parts car that uh, was from a swap meet and it was pretty beat up, but I took the parts off of it. I was able to get my... U T bar so you can get a close look at it and but I glued this area too much with super glue so I could never get it opened again to replace the one piece so yeah that was a bad incident but I never really expected to find a parts car so that was why I glued it with super glue but on this car it doesn't have an opening deck lid like all the like regular blister pack cars so the model kits didn't have an opening deck lid at least not the Monte Carlo and I don't really know why um and as you can see the white wall and this one is kind of chipping away a little bit but still nice display piece that's why i keep it around because you can still lift up the back end like i had it in the display setting out there on the road and then like sometimes 
if you kind of play with it a little bit, you can get the front end to like set in a different manner that looks kind of cool. So those are the Revels. Actually, I have one more to show you guys and then we'll kind of take a look at a couple Hot Wheels to compare it with. So the 71 Boatel Riv, which is actually a popular lowrider too. Not quite as popular as like say the Impalas or the General Motors 80s G bodies, but still a very popular car. Um, and this type of paint job with the clown and the city murals is kind of a little primitive. It's not really a great mural at all. Uh, this car actually has the opening deck lid too, but it's a little harder to see in there. And it's like, I think a two pump setup with the batteries. The rear deck doesn't open as much as the Impala's because of that boat tail. So this also, I got the front up, but it slams down and gives it that slammed appearance. So very cool car. Um, and actually Hot Wheels has a really cool 71 boat tail. And it's usually the greatest lowrider. I know nowadays they're using it as like those sponsor brand cars in the main line, but it makes a really nice low rider. This I will show you, but I just wanted to show you Hot Wheels did a pretty good job at doing the car with pretty close proportions, uh, a little small maybe, because the Revels I'm going to say are pretty much spot on with scaling. Um, Hot Wheels, as we know, is not spot on with the 164th, but still nice. This is the Super Treasure Hunt from 2011. I love this car because this is actually the, I guess you could say, like the first generation of lowriders. Uh, it has the five-spoke wheels, which they're not Kragers in the lowrider world. They're called Supremes, um, and they were really popular before the wire spokes. Then you had the true spokes, like from Krager, uh, and other things like the wire spokes that didn't have many wires at all. They were kind of the, um, I guess you could say, pioneer wheels for low riding. But anyways, this car looks great with the gold, like Supremes. Usually Supremes, though, you didn't see very often in gold. They were always chrome. And it just has this subtle, like, custom work on this car with like the custom grill headlight area really cool all the trims done in gold gold interior which is a little overkill but hey that's how hot wheels is because the front end and rear end like chrome trim plastic trim is part of the interior bucket so it's like all or nothing so if they would have made it black then you would have a black bumper so they did the right thing by using gold because with the tinted glass the gold interior kind of looks like a gold crush velvet or something so very cool super treasure hunt actually probably one of my favorites uh from 2011 although 2011 was the last marked year for supers and it was a pretty good year first year that they ever put 15 cars in a set too so this is like a um i guess you could say milestone year for supers um, then we have another one that's a Riv, but it's a 64 and it's also a tre super treasure hunt that appeared in 2008. This car reappeared as a super treasure hunt in 2013, but in my opinion, this is the best variant because of the Chrome five spokes. They, these actually replicate the, uh, Supremes to a T. This is exactly how a low rider would have looked from the seventies with this pattern style insert type of paint job and the chop top subtle custom grill uh then the chrome supremes just it screams like 70s low rider basically gypsy rose that 64 impala that was pink had the pattern paint job with the roses in it of course and chrome supremes and it looked really good and it kind of reminds me of this riv so that's why I have this guy out here. So those two kind of represent like what the 70s lowrider culture looked like. Then you get into the 80s, which was still like that look. And then you had the more conservative, original looking Impalas like this. And then mild, like pinstriping type of things. And 
you were seeing more and more of the wire spokes starting in the later 80s and then going into the 90s and such. So, yeah, the, basically those 70s through the 90s, it didn't evolve much except for, like, wills, and that was it, and maybe some better hydraulic setups and things of that nature. But that would have been probably about it as far as I can recall. Now, going back to the die cast, here is a Muscle Machines 57 Chevy wagon, which I've done in one of my wagon videos, or I showed you guys in one of my wagon videos. This is from Jesse James series, and it also comes in like a turquoise, like maybe mint blue green color too. Um, and what's cool about this, it does have functioning suspension, but it's not as like fully functional as like the Revels or the Hot Wheels 100%. Like I think you, if you see my other video, you'll remember, like you had to push on it and kind of wait for it to click and it's kind of a little bit um i don't know hard sometimes there we go and it doesn't do much but yeah it lifts it up a little bit as you can see it raised the whole car up and it's it has a different stance and then if you push down on it and hold it and then it locks in again it's slammed again that's about all that one does so that is a cool car, though. Nicely detailed, nice wagon. Probably one of my favorite 57 Chevy wagons that's on the market. They did a really nice job on it. M2s are nice, too, but sometimes the opening doors and stuff take away from the casting. Sometimes the body lines are not right. And when it's a four-door wagon, which this one's only a two-door, but the four-door M2s with the opening doors, it just doesn't look right because only the front one's open. Uh, now the sedan deliveries and then the handyman wagon like this one that are only two doors, it's not too bad. Um, so this I really like, this Jesse James one. And if you look inside the car, the windows are tinted, but you can see the hydraulic pumps in the back and the batteries and stuff. So they added some nice details to it. So then moving along, let's go ahead and do the couple of green lights that I have. And the only green light lowrider that they ever really made was the Jesse Pinkman car from Breaking Bad. And this is it. And it's okay. Uh, nice job on the 82 Monte Carlo rep. Um, like representing it and duplicating it. Very nice job. All the details are great. Um, and they're like one of the first people to make a 164th that's not an SS, which I hats off to them because we needed one in the market. The only thing bad though is the wheels and tires. Like these look like regular 15 inch uh, standard offset like wire spoke wheels. But Jesse's car had like 13 by seven inch reversed or maybe 14 by seven inch reversed Dayton's or player true knockoff wire wheels and it the wheels stuck out low profile this just doesn't look like it now the 143rd car that green light makes they nailed it with the wheels looks great uh the only thing that they didn't nail it with they didn't put the red trim on the 143rd so the car did have red trim in the series but these wheels look a little bit too big um, but still, nice casting though, beautiful casting, and as you can see, it has the same plate, the cap, and so, very cool that they got that detail with the plate. The next one is a custom that I did, not really much, it's just a wheel swap, but what it is, is a 70... Oldsmobile 442 convertible from the Bear Jackson series, and I had a... Um, another car that I said I bought for parts, and that's where the bar came from, or the front suspension bar for the Monte Carlo came from. So I had an extra set of wheels, too, so I figured I would make my own lowrider. So I figured, hey, this uh, Olds 442, second gen 442, look great with little Dayton wires on it. So that's what we did, and they worked out perfect, actually. So this is just one that I did up to have something different instead of your typical like 
impalas and such things and it does have an opening hood and such and it just looks good as a low rider the green metallic with the gold stripes and the saddle colored interior it doesn't look like a stock color setup it looks like this would be a low rider so that's one of the reasons I picked this car too to swap the wheels on it so it turned out good um now another custom that I did. We'll get into a couple of the donks and that's where kind of things change. Actually before I do the donk I'll show you a couple other ones. This is kind of what happened in like the early 2000s. People went with the lowriders and put big wheels on it. Didn't really lift the cars yet at that time. Like say between 2000, 2003, something in that era they just put 20s or 22s, whatever they could put in the wheel well. Maybe put some like spring spacers in it, but that would be it. They didn't go through the problem of actually lifting the car. So this, I forget what series this is from in Hot Wheels, but this is a Hot Wheels 63 Chevy. This is also a beautiful casting. They mislabeled the package though, on these. They labeled it as a 64, but it is a 63. Um... Nicely done car, and it represents exactly like what some of the Impalas in Lowrider magazine would have looked like, say, around 2001, 2002. They would have still had, like, maybe even Air Ride instead of Hydraulics or something, but still would have been representing the Lowrider culture. But, um, yeah, not your typical thing. So that was a new trend as of, like, the turn of the century. So that is, like, one of the big movements in lowrider the small Dayton's and the hydraulic setups were still there um but that's what they did so here's a buick regal by jada they did a pretty good job representing that look too but jada we call it jada scaling like sometimes their big girth on the body is a little bit too big the bumpers are way too thick on this car but still it's not bad it's pretty cool and uh, west side you know, type of a uh, custom vanity plate dub city in the back window so they did a cool job representing it too and then one more jada to show you guys and this is their 96 impala ss which is also jada scaled with the big thick rocker panels and uh, this, though, though, represents that look I was going to say. Because these cars actually squat nicely down on 24-inch wheels. And they can be deep dish too. You don't have to get, like, that reversed offset where they're flat. Um, they were actually able to set down on top of 24s. Maybe with a little bit of, like, stiffer spring so they didn't the body didn't settle and rub them. But you didn't really have to lift them. They actually did pretty good. So, I think it says sweet candy, something like that. I don't know. It's kind of one of those uh, vanity plates that you kind of got to put all the letters together and read and figure it out. And I can't get it to focus. Yeah, I guess it would be Sweet Candy. I wouldn't say maybe it would just said Sweet Caddy, but it's an Impala, not a Caddy, so that wouldn't work. Um, but anyways, it does a good job representing that look. But the front end, they didn't do so well with it. The front end almost looks like a Crown Vic. It doesn't really represent an Impala so well. But they tried, and it's not a bad casting. As I said, it's kind of jotified, like how we... Call a lot of the Jada stuff. The Jada has more of that like cartoonish type of proportions to a lot of their cars. Not all of them. Some of them are pretty cool, like the 72 GTX that they make that I showed you guys the other week. Those are pretty darn nice. The Grand Nationals I have to show you guys someday. I'll, they are kind of like cartoonish. Well, I have the Grand National of like that Regal M164. I'll show you guys one day. Um... So, the next one with the big wheels is a Cadillac. Then SUV started appearing in the lowrider culture. They were always there, but they became more popular since the big wheels came in. This is from Team Bartwell Hot Wheels. So, this is a very cool casting. Nicely done. Very true to scale. Uh, Cadillac Escalade. So, they did a pretty good job on this. As you can see, like... 
setting it next to uh, the 57 Chevy wagon that is supposedly like true to scale. Looks pretty good. Same thing, like comparing it to the Impalas, it's not bad. It's actually pretty nicely done Escalade because the Impala, the 59 especially, was a very long, huge car. So the, fit, the 59 comparing to the Escalade is pretty much spot on, I would say. So now let's move on to the donks. And this one is a custom that I did. This is the Montezuma from the High Rakers main line from 2006 Hot Wheels. But what I did is I took the big real rider wheels from a couple cool ones and popped on this car. And then I painted the headlights, painted the tail lights, also painted the windshield trim and painted the interior green to match the car because the interior bucket was chrome so that's why it has a chrome grill very cool look i think after i got done with it i really like it it rolls nicely it didn't even have to make custom axles these are like actually the cool one axles these wheels came off the uh, pop culture Atari series cool one. I think this uh, the cool one had centipede as the theme on it But that's where I got these wheels and tires from this is what the car looks like in original form This is an untouched high rakers as you can see the chrome interior doesn't look so good um Then the windshield just looks like it lost a windshield frame without any detail then you have like as always, non-painted tail lights, non-painted headlights on your mainline Hot Wheels. So I think that dressed it up pretty nice. And what's cool about those Cool Ones tires has green wall tires, which match this car to a T. So it was perfect. Um, so a couple others. These cars are actually really hard to find, really valuable too, which I was surprised. The Motor Max 71 Impalas and the Motor Max 76 Caprice. And this is from their High Raker series. These are the two most sought after ones. I actually found a few of the pink ones and I actually found a couple of the American Graffiti Impalas and Caprices that don't have the raised suspension. I um, will put the Caprice down for a second and show you another Impala. This is actually the American Graffiti car on top of this car's chassis, but these are easy to customize because they have screws. So what I did to just have a couple different donks, I body swapped one of the American Graffiti ones. And the Motor Max cars don't have really nice wheels or tires. They're rubber tires, but they're not very nicely detailed. So I put a set of Hot Wheel 10 spokes on it and they fit perfect. And as I said, this would have been the chassis for the American Graffiti orange car, but instead I swapped them out. As you can see on the quarter, this says, actually just on the one side, High Rakers or high risers, sorry. Uh, and then on this one, on the quarter panel, it says American Graffiti, which I have no idea why they called that series American Graffiti, because these cars were way too new to be in the movie. But anyways, that's what I did with this, to kind of switch it up, have a couple different donks in my collection, and then give this car a different appearance uh, too. So you have the donk variant of it and then the slammed variant of it and the donks as you can see they actually just have some boxes kind of glued on a regular chassis uh you may actually be able to remove those and put regular wheels back on this car and get it to have this stance again i'm not 100 percent sure on that but i would assume you probably could but these guys on eBay nowadays are going for like anywhere between 25 to 50 bucks each for the two wheel, or not the two wheel drive, but the uh, lower one, they, because the donks remind me of four wheel drives, so that's why I wanted to say four wheel drive, but the donks, the pink one, the last one I seen sell was like 50 bucks. Uh, they're extremely hard to find nowadays, but the two wheel or the lowered one, not the two-wheel drive one, used to warm the pegs like at Walmart and stuff when these things were available. Um, and then here's the Caprice. 
So guys, we're running out of time, so I'm going to wrap it up. It's going on 30 minutes now. Just give you a quick look of like what the 90s trend looked like for the lowrider trucks. You guys have all seen this, but the reason I want to show you this, I don't know how many of you opened it, but I'm kind of like wondering. The passenger side window is down, but the driver's side window is up. I don't know if anybody else opened this and noticed this or if this is an error. I don't think it's an error because it looks like it's cut very nicely. So for some reason, driver's side window is up, passenger side window is down. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Kind of a little odd, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think that covers mostly all of them. The C10 is back there, but you guys already seen it. I just brought it out as a filler because it's a low rider too with the adjustable suspension. Um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this and, uh, the last piece on the real lowrider culture after I showed you like regular stance cars at the big wheels, then people started wanting to go with gigantic wheels, which these would have probably been equivalent to like 30 inch wheels. So they raised the suspension and that's why I keep wanting to call them four wheel drives because of the suspension look. And then this guy would have probably been about like 22 inches or something like that 22 inch wheel maybe more than that maybe like 26 inch wheel something in that regards but anyways uh that's what i wanted to show you guys is that type of uh thing how low riders evolved where they're not even really low riders anymore they look like monster trucks but you still have your conservative uh original uh, pioneer type lowriders too. They're still readily built all over the country and all over the world for that matter. And they still uh, are more popular than these donks and stuff. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you how people's taste had changed and how lowriders actually became high riders throughout the decades. But um, anyways, uh, this is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And then on Monday... We're either going to be doing some green light movie cars or just some new Johnny Lightnings and some old Johnny Lightnings. Not sure which one I'm going to do yet. It depends on what is coming in this weekend. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you have not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. Please remember to give me a thumbs up and please remember to share the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday.